Welcome to Second Recapped. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The film opens with a flashback scene in 1945 at the United States Prisoner of War Camp in Nagasaki, Japan. One of the camp commandos, Ichiro Yoshida, frantically frees dozens of American soldiers who had been captured as a result of World War II. After Yashida's dutiful comrades commit suicide, Logan saves Yashida from an explosion by sheltering him in his prison. Although Yashida is badly burned by the explosion, he can recover quickly thanks to his regenerative ability. Seventy years later, after leaving the X-Men, Logan is approached by Yashida, who is now the head of a powerful Japanese corporation and is offered a chance to regain his mortality. Logan, a man who now lives alone, is haunted by nightmares and memories of accidentally killing his girlfriend, Jin Grey. Short on time, Logan encounters a hunter who has killed his bear pal in a bar. After Logan found out, he accused the hunter of his cunning actions, and they got into a fight. When the hunter's friends tried to attack him, he was suddenly assisted by a Japanese woman named Yukio, who is a mutant and can predict people's deaths. Yukio carries a Denzin, an ancient secret katana. After threatening bar patrons, Logan joins Yukio as he leaves in his rental car. On the way, Yukio explains how she has been tracking Logan for over a year. She was sent by Ichiro Yashida, the CEO of an industrial company in Tokyo who is now dying of cancer. Yashida wanted to meet Logan before his death to thank him for saving his life many years ago. Upon arrival in Tokyo, Logan immediately, Logan prepares to meet Ichiro Yashida at his well-guarded home. During their conversation, Ichiro proposes transferring Wolverine's mutation to himself to achieve immortality. Logan refuses, knowing the risks involved. Later that night, Logan has a dream about Jane and is surprised to encounter a mutant named Viper. It appears that Viper has inserted something into Logan's throat with her tongue to affect his healing abilities. After a strange dream, Logan wakes up to find that Yoshida has died. During Yoshida's funeral, Logan senses that something is wrong and identifies a Yakuza murderer disguised as a robed priest in the middle of the procession. As Logan approaches to save Mariko from being kidnapped, he is shot and beaten several times. Luckily, he is assisted by Yoshida's loyal bodyguard, Kenosha Harada. Archer, who used to date Mariko, is at a distance. A chase ensues between the kidnapper and Logan, followed by Yukio and Harada. They end up at a train station. When Logan manages to save them, he notices that his healing abilities are starting to weaken. As he exits, four more Yakuza members confront him. The fight resumes. Although Logan is a bit overwhelmed, he can defeat all four and return to his seat. After the train stops, Logan and Mariko get out and find a safe place to hide from the Yakuza. They stay in a rundown hotel. While standing on the balcony on the outskirts of town, Logan suddenly fainted due to the pain from his unhealed wounds. When he regained consciousness, he found himself being operated on by Hitoshi, the hotel owner's grandson and a veterinary student. Marco and Logan then decided to temporarily stay at Aichiro's old house to calm down after helping some locals chop wood. Later, Logan realized that he was at the location of a P.O. Do camp and walked to the well. While covered with a metal lining, he suddenly had a flashback to the day of the nuclear explosion when he saved Ichiro Yoshida. He remembered that Yoshida had given him katakana as tanks, but he refused. That's how both of them survived the nuclear explosion in Hiroshima. They fell into the well back home during a stormy night. Logan and Marco continue their previous conversation. Marco reveals her human and gentle side. Logan talks about how his grandfather aptly called him Ronin, a samurai without a master. Carried away by the increasingly warm atmosphere, the two of them kissed. The first time they slept together, the next morning Metal wakes up without Marco by his side. He hears Marco screaming outside, captured and taken away by the Yakuza. Logan tries to take Marco from the gangster but fails. He was only able to restrain one Yakuza member after getting shot in the leg. Logan tries to question the man, and it is revealed that Marco's middle was taken to his fiancée Naburo. During the conversation, Naburo revealed that Shinden was Mariko's father. He explained that in Yoshida's last days, he spent millions hoarding adamantium to prolong his life, which nearly bankrupted Yoshida Industries. However, in his will, Yoshida left everything to his granddaughter Mariko. Naburo was the person Shinjin paid to kill Mariko so that the inheritance would be his. 
Logan became angry and threw Nabarro off the balcony. Meanwhile, Mariko, who had been kidnapped, was brought before Singen. Unbeknownst to them, a group of Black Clan ninjas, led by Harada and Viper, attacked the Yakuza security guards one by one. Suddenly, Shinken noticed that he was surrounded by a ninja in black, and Mariko was rescued and taken away. Viper confronted Shinjin and revealed her true goal, to keep Mariko alive. With her long tongue, she spread venomous poison onto the tip of the pen and stabbed it into the vein on Shinjin's neck, causing him to fall into the pool. Meanwhile, Yukio and Logan arrived at the complex and found a note written in blood on the corpse of one of the Yakuza. The note hinted that they should quickly go to Yoshida's birthplace, which was the location of a research facility built into the side of a mountain. At the same time, Shingen had risen from the pool. The person was wearing an armored samurai outfit and had a sword. Logan turned on the MRI machine to scan his body and was surprised to discover that Viper had implanted a parasitic device into his heart a few days earlier. Despite Yukio's warnings not to operate on himself, Logan refused to listen and began removing the device. While Logan was unplugging the device, Sing entered the room with his sword. Yukio quickly restrained Sing while Logan continued to remove the device. Logan was momentarily helpless after Shinjin took the device he managed to steal. However, he quickly recovered and attacked Shinjin. After Logan slashed Shinjin's neck, he now calls himself Wolverine. Following his victory over Shinjin, Logan immediately pursued Harada and Viper to Yoshida's research center to rescue them. Upon arrival, he was confronted by Harada and his black ninjas. The ninjas showered Logan with arrows before fainting. After being hit by Harada's poison arrows, Logan awakens to find himself pinned to a steel pillar with the silver samurai beside him. Viber appears and tells Logan that the silver samurai is made from the adamantium that Yoshida has been hoarding. Logan becomes emotional, causing his metal claws to shoot out. At the same time, Mariko finds herself being held captive by Harada, who believes she is working for Yoshida's interests. Even though he knew Viper was evil, Harada could not betray him. Because their goal was to serve Yoshida, Harada began to persuade them to come back to him. As they kissed, Marco drew her dagger and stabbed him in the shoulder. Then, he ran to Logan's side. Suddenly, Silver Samurai got up from his seat and walked towards Logan. He drew a flaming, eight-foot-long red sword. Seeing Logan in danger, Marco screamed to make the samurai stop. Unexpectedly, the samurai's shot was deflected into Logan's cage, freeing him. A chase ensued. Meanwhile, Harada, now aware that he was on the wrong side, immediately changed his course and attacked Viper with his arrows. The arrow hit Viper in the chest, but it seems that she is immune to that attack. On the other hand, Yukio caught up with someone who was sneaking into the research facility and fought them one-on-one. -on -one. During the fight, Viper reveals his true form. Meanwhile, Harada attempts to help Logan by stabbing a samurai helmet with an arrow, but he is fatally wounded and dies in Moroko's arms. Logan grips the katana with both hands and swings, chopping off the samurai helmet. The two fall hundreds of feet, and Samurai manages to survive. During the fight between Logan and Samurai, Logan was momentarily overwhelmed when the Silver Samurai attempted to extract bone marrow from his hand to gain the power of lightning healing. At the same time, Yukio was able to wrap a rope around Viper's neck and hang her to death by a shaft. Unexpectedly, Yoshida emerged from the hole in the samurai's head without a helmet, revealing himself as the pilot of the robot. He explained that after Logan refused to transfer immortality to him, he faked his death and orchestrated Mariko's kidnapping to bring Logan back to him. As he talked and absorbed life from Logan, he began to appear more powerful. Logan shows signs of aging, while his younger granddaughter hears her grandfather's terrible plan. Marco comes closer and throws one of the metal claws at her grandfather, hitting him right on the skull. Then, he releases Logan, who looks limp. Logan manages to recover and return to his youth as before, with Mariko's approval. Finally, Logan finishes off the Silver Samurai to prevent. Logan, who was exhausted, fainted instantly. At the time of fainting, he had a picture of Jane. Initially, Logan is still not ready to separate from Jane 
But considering that Jane is gone and her life must continue, Logan is finally determined to end his story with Jane, even though his feelings will never go away. He is short of time eventually. Music, Yoshida Industrial was fully acquired by Mariko. Meanwhile, Logan chose to continue his life as a soldier, with Yukio volunteering to be his bodyguard. Two years later, Logan meets Magneto and Professor X for a new mission. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to watch our other videos. See you in the next one.